At the beginning of any war, there's a massive amount of uh, propaganda. Obviously, they have to build up uh, people's views, make the enemy seem as evil as possible. And the youngsters were led to believe it was a duty of everyone to serve the country. I was brought up in a, a family. My parents had a, a musical instrument business and uh, we happened to live in the apartment above the actual shop, the property, and it was a very happy family. My father uh, was a pacifist, as I am, and he spent three and a half years in the First World War, in prison, uh, because of his conscientious views. And, uh, of course, he never said a lot about it to us, but we knew that what his view was. And, of course, it was probably more political than a lot of houses because they just didn't just follow the general news, they were able to get information which, from different sources which gave me a chance of understanding the world situation better than perhaps a lot of uh, boys or young people at that time. Uh, whilst he was in, in prison, uh, my mother used to visit him. And they, she was regularly insulted because, of course, they weren't married at the time. They, she was engaged to my father. But because he was a constant objector, of course, she was tarred with the same brush and she was sent white feathers. On several occasions, I'm afraid she was spat at. And so she had a, a difficult time as well during the war. But as far as my father was concerned, because he was a constant objector, uh, he was on... He was on uh, soldier confinement, and the, it, there was a no speaking rule in the prison. They had about half an hour on the prison yard during the afternoon, and that was about all they got out. I mean, I can imagine myself being stuck in a, shell, a cell for 23 and a half hours a day, not being able to speak to anyone. It, it, it's, it's a form of torture, I think. What I admire him for, he, despite the fact that he was faced with the possibility of execution, he wouldn't change his principles or his views, and I thought that that's always impressed me. It, it, it takes a strong personality to, some, to stick to your principles in those sorts of situations. The conscription was in 1939, where it, anyone between the age of 18 and 41 had to either go into the forces or, if in my, as in my case, register as a conscientious objector. So when 18 uh, came along, of course, I got call-up papers, and of course, uh, you, you also had details given about the alternatives, you see, and of course I chose to uh, register as a conscientious objector. At the beginning of any war, there's a massive amount of uh, propaganda. Obviously, they have to build up uh, people's views, make the enemy seem as evil as possible, and the youngsters were led to believe it was a duty of everyone to serve the country in this way. I mean, boys going into the services, the first part of their service, they, they have to be trained to change the view about the value of human life, which, of course, I didn't agree with uh, the necessity to kill people to, to produce uh, the results that they were trying to achieve. I think probably a lot of people don't... If they use their imagination to think what actually they were doing, for instance, someone in the Air Force, way up there, if they could use their imagination, it's the effect of a bomb dropped 
wherever it's dropped and think of the actual detail of bodies being blown to pieces, their heads knocked off, all this sort of thing. I'm sure very few people would feel that they were doing the right thing for whatever cause. The principle of conscription, I believe, was wrong to force young people through conscription into the possibility of killing another person. Like a court, you were placed in front of them and you could have witnesses and they were behind you. And, uh, of course, uh, you had to read your statement out, first of all, and then, of course, questions were started by different members, usually initially by the ju judge and then by the other people, uh, all sorts of different questions. As it happened, this particular judge, it was Judge Burgess, and he had a reputation, in fact, it was called by some people the hanging judge, because at the time, of course, uh, hanging was occurring. And uh, he had a reputation for being a pretty severe judge, you see. So finding out that it was he that was going to be the judge, you, you, you wonder just what's going to happen, you see, naturally. So this is the statement that I've made to the uh, tribunal. It was the National Service Armed Forces Act 1939 which applied, and it was an application to the local tribunal by a person provisionally registered in the Register of Conscientious Objection. Believing, as I do, that there is something of God in every man, I feel that I cannot take any part in the preparation of war. For I feel impelled to make my protest against conscription in all its forms as being a violation of true liberty. I ask the tribunal to leave me free to serve the community in accordance with the light of truth as I see it. And of course that after a time terminates the uh, tribunal and you have to wait really then for the decision. Unfortunately, uh, some of them obviously completely disagreed with my point of view and couldn't understand what I was doing. And I did in fact lose some of my friends at the time. It, I was prepared to continue being friendly with them, but they obviously decided I wasn't a person they wanted to associate with. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, anything like that isn't, isn't, isn't a, an ideal uh, situation, you see. But having known what my parents had gone through in a similar sort of circumstances, I mean, it was minimal compared with what it had been in the First World War. So I was quite happy to put up with that. I decided that I wanted to go into what's called the... It was called at that time the Friends War Victims Relief Organisation. And I read quite a bit about this and thought they were doing excellent work and it was something I was prepared to do to help civilians and people in the community who had been suffering, as I had experienced, uh, bombing and blitzes, which I went through in Manchester uh, for some time. And, uh, I felt it was something that I, I could do to, would be a service to the community. I mean, the world has some time has to learn a different way of solving its conflict problems. Once a war starts, you've lost it. You can't control it at all. It's completely out of control. It takes its own life on, you see. So you, you have to find some way of stopping wars by negotiating. And I mean, if it takes you 12 months to negotiate something, 
Uh, it's much better than 12 months of bombing someone. Somehow you have to encourage uh, amongst the majority of the population of considering peaceful and reconciliatory ways of, of dealing with problems. It would transform the world, quite honestly.